Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're very glad that you're with us today. We give a special welcome to our visitors. It's nice to have you with us today. We wish you a good day and a good week. Uh, we, today is our last official day for Sunday school, so we do want to say thanks if you were a teacher or if you uh, are a parent that has been sending your children. Uh, we appreciate what you've done this past year. Uh, thank you very much. And we also, tomorrow will be our, um, uh, our blood mobile uh, here, and we need volunteers to help with the blood mobile, so if you can help with that, um, please, uh, uh, the contact information is in the bulletin, and you can uh, be a part of that. We've had several people go on mission trips, and we're grateful for that. Um, Nate and Mary Beth Breen have recently gone to Jamaica. And they're going to be sharing with us now about uh, their trip. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, about a month ago, Mary Beth and I had the opportunity through, through my work, which is Pizza Ranch, to be able to head down to uh, Jamaica, um, away from the resorts, even though we drove past the resorts daily, but um, not exactly the beachfront that you'd get in Jamaica. So uh, we did a few different group projects while we were down there. We're going to show you a video here in just a second, which hopefully kind of put some tangibility to a little bit to what I'm talking about. But um, we worked at a school uh, for four mornings during the week. Uh, Mary Beth kind of led the, the first grade uh, class down there. We did lots of little fun projects with making paper mache, and we did some reading, um, some geography kinds of stuff with that. Then in the afternoons, um, our group, of, which was 11 of us, we split off into two teams. Um, you're going to see that we... One of the things we did is we took a fence that was um, around the school system, and then we, we uh, mixed concrete by hand, which if you've ever done that is a whole lot of fun. Um, we mixed concrete in 90 degree temperatures, yeah. Uh, and we did that um, to just secure the fence in there so that the, what, the goats and the dogs wouldn't just run around in the schoolyard. Uh, then uh, part of the other group worked at the church, which you're going to see um, part of the church service that we went to, which is starkly different from what we're used to. Um, lots of the, uh, the hand raising and the clapping and the dancing and um, dancing with scarves and stuff like that. Um, but with the church, we built a chicken coop, um, sustainable chicken coop, so that um, and you'll see some chickens in the film too, um, which are now um, harvested and they're going to... Um, be able to use those to, to eat for nutrition, obviously, but then also to be able to sell to the locals in the market and be able to um, get eggs from there as well. So um, I think go ahead and roll the, roll the DVD, and then we'll talk a little bit more in just a minute. Fan the flame from the fire of freedom.
Once I was in a dungeon On a day when a man was born From one world to another Love cuts like a razor, burning up our fear and pain, ascending fire like a laser beam. This is the time of divine favor. Sublime love cuts like a razor, burning up our fear and pain, ascending fire like a laser beam. about this trip and uh, we, we talked about it together and um, actually before we had heard about it we had discussed saying sometime in our life we want to go on a mission trip together and God had that plan sooner than we probably anticipated it to be but we thought okay God's, God's listening to us and we need to listen to him now and so we thought let's take this step of faith and see what happens and um, you know we have two young children and we both work, and so what does that look like for us to go away for a week? And um, we, we went for it, and the church helped us out immensely financially in supporting us for our trip, and we thank you so much. And many of you prayed for us, and you gave us some psychological help before we left, too, and followed up with us when we returned, and that really means a lot to us. So we appreciate that very, very much, so thank you. and. I also want to inspire you. Um, there's a song by Matthew West called Do Something, and that really spoke to us uh, before our trip. We would just hear it at random times, and, and we thought, yes, we are going to do something, and it was a big do something. Um, and your do something might not be so big, and that's okay, but um, we know that God used us on this trip, and while we were there and when we returned, we really felt that all the people on our trip 
were meant to be there, that God inspired each one of them to be there and to use their gifts and their talents. And we know that our gifts and talents were used while we were there. And so we just encourage you to look and see where God is calling you to go. As often as the case around our home, I don't really have anything left to say because she kind of said everything. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I will add to this that, uh, you know, we, we poured this foundation at the school system to kind of keep the, the animals, the, there's literally dogs and goats that are running all over the place. They're like you know, deer and birds here or something like that. Um, but uh, w what we saw was that, um, you know, just, just as we were making this foundation um, on the fence uh, to keep these things out, God also provides a foundation for us that, that he can, um, you know, he's our protection, he's our hedge that is around us on a daily basis. So whether you realize that or not, um, it's there. Uh, I guess I also just want to say words of gratitude to our congregation as well um, for allowing us this opportunity, for being, a, for being a key cog in just the financial resources that we were able to um, make it happen. So, um, And yeah, you don't have to go far, of course, to do mission work. We've talked about that in, in church before. Uh, we, one thing you didn't see is we were up on the hillside um, at a different place. We were at a children's home, um, which is very... Yeah, high, high disability, um, you know, I'd say rather low-functioning individuals, I don't know. Um, but one thing I, we were doing is I was pushing a gentleman along, and there's a, a tag on his wheelchair. Uh, it says Hope Haven. It's like, oh, a little taste of Northwest Iowa down in, in the hills of Jamaica. So there's stuff around here that you can do that can make an um, impact on people worldwide as well. So thank you again. Thank you. Let's stand and greet each other, welcome each other to God's house. Good morning to all of you. This morning we are here to worship and um, hear God's words that he has to speak to us. Um, and no matter what we have going on in our lives right now, and no matter what we have done in our past or the things that we're struggling with, um, God wants us to bring them to him and to lay them at his feet and to just give them up. And more than anything, he just wants us to know how much he loves him or how much he loves us. So this morning, let's take some time and sing together and celebrate that fact and worship our God.
As they are taking the offering, I'm going to be singing a song. Um, it's called What Love Is This? And it's by Carrie Job. Um, and with Easter not so far behind us, I think um, it's a very good reminder to us that we should be thankful for the amazing love that God has for us every single day and not just um, in the season of Easter and Christmas and when we're mostly, most reminded of it. So um, what love is this? You never change You are the God you say you are When I'm afraid You come and still my beating heart you stay the same when hope is just a distant thought you take my pain and you lead me to the cross what love is this that you gave your life for me
Thank you so much. I hope you've had a chance to meet Danielle. If you haven't, I hope you can soon meet her and welcome her to uh, Sheldon and to First Reformed Church. We want to dismiss the children to Children's Church. If you haven't already gone, we uh, dismiss you now to uh, Children's Church. In our prayer today, we want to uh, remember uh, Carol Pomeranke and her daughter, uh, Michelle. Michelle has uh, cancer. She lives near Des Moines and is uh, being treated there. She is at home now, but um, has to take uh, chemotherapy and radiation treatments, and those are making her weak. And um, Carol is uh, uh, there and helping uh, her with her children, and uh, it's uh, exhausting uh, for uh, Carol, and um, certainly an emotionally difficult time, so let's uh, pray for uh, that family. Uh, also, Roger Helgerson will be having an angiogram done on Tuesday. Remember our search team? We had um, a, an interview this past week by Skype, and that went very well. And this coming week, we are going to do another interview of another candidate. Um, and uh, so this uh, interview will be uh, face to face. Uh, but um, we appreciate your prayers and your uh, support and patience uh, with uh, the process. Uh, so um, let's um, continue to look to the Lord as he directs us in uh, this um, process. Let's be joined together in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much that you said in your word that you loved the world and you loved us so much that you gave your only Son. We thank you that through Him we can know that our sins are forgiven and we can have eternal life. Thank you for the good news of the gospel, for the message of our salvation. We thank you that you came to us in grace and mercy. We thank you for the grace that's greater than all our sin. We thank you that you invite us all and each to come to yourself, to confess our sin, and to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. We thank you for the many gifts of life that you give to us for each day, for the spiritual gifts, for the ways that people use their gifts on mission trips, or here within the life of the church in worship, in sharing music, in taking the offering, in dividing the offering, in greeting each other, and in helping each other. Lord, help us each to realize the place you've called us to, and then to do that uh, diligently, and to do it in a way that gives glory to you. Thank you for First Reformed Church. Thank you for the ways you have blessed it, for the ways you continue to bless us. We pray for each person here today. Father, whether we've been a member many years or whether we're quite new or whether we may be a visitor today, we thank you that your love surrounds each of us and you care for all of us. Help us to know that today. Be with us in this day and through the days of this week. Guide us in all of the activities and responsibilities that we face. Father, we pray today for Carol Pomeranke and her daughter Michelle and uh, their family. We pray that you will uh, give to them grace and strength in this time. We pray for healing for Michelle. We pray that uh, you will uh, give to them what they need for uh, facing this trial. And Father, for Roger, as he has this uh, angiogram, we pray that it would go well. We ask uh, your blessing upon all who are facing uh, physical or mental or emotional uh, handicaps and disabilities. Father, whatever the case is, we look to you for your strength and for your help. And Father, we also pray for the outpouring of your Spirit upon our community, that we could be effective and useful, that our lights could shine, that we could be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and that others may be drawn to you. We pray, Father, for your blessing upon us as we continue in worship this day, and as we continue in our work 
We ask uh, your guidance and blessing upon the search process. We ask that in your time and way and in and your uh, sovereign plan, you would make known to us uh, the person of your choosing. Continue to uh, lead and bless us, empower us uh, by your Spirit, that we may do that which glorifies you and furthers your work. So lead us, we pray. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today is from Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, we're reading verses 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is a leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day for the sunshine and the warmth as we look around and just worship in your creation. And now, especially today, Lord, we ask a special blessing on Pastor Bruce. Wilt thou put your arms around him and fill his his mind and heart with the words that you want him to share with us. We thank you for that word. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen. Thank you. We have been thinking the last couple of weeks about spiritual gifts. We realize that spiritual gifts are grace things. They are given to us out of God's grace. We don't have to work for them or earn them or try to deserve them. God simply gives us these spiritual gifts. It's somewhat like a birthday or a Christmas gift that we get. We really don't have to work for that gift. We simply get it because it's our birthday or because it's Christmas time. But even though we receive those gifts out of love, they still have to be unwrapped. I suppose we wrap gifts because it makes it more exciting, more inviting, and more fun. It's a lot more fun to get a beautifully wrapped present than to get a gift in a paper sack. We just enjoy unwrapping gifts. It adds to the thrill, the excitement, the discovery. And spiritual gifts might be something like that too. God gives them to us out of His grace, but we still have to unwrap them. We have to discover them. We have to develop them and use them. Today we're thinking about how we discover our spiritual gifts. Romans 3 Uh, rather Romans chapter 12, which was just read, 
tells us that we ought to check our motives, we ought to check our dedication, and we ought to check our attitudes in using the spiritual gifts. First of all, we ought to check our motives. Romans chapter 12 begins a new section in this book. The first three chapters of Romans are basically about our sin. In the first chapter, Paul starts addressing the Gentiles. And he tells them that they are guilty, that they are sinners. But in the second chapter, Paul doesn't let the Jews off the hook. He says to them, even though they have received the law, even though they have the prophets, even though they are religious and diligent in their religion, still they too are guilty. They also are sinners. And then in the third chapter, Paul makes that all-encompassing summary. In chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's God's diagnosis. When a doctor sees a patient, that doctor does an evaluation. They ask a lot of questions. They do a lot of tests. They want to determine what's wrong with this patient. And then they will know how to better treat the patient. God here gives to us the diagnosis of the human condition. God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's basically the first section of Romans chapters 1 to chapter 3, verse 23. And then in chapter 3, verse 24, we start a new section dealing with how we are delivered from our sin. The section is about our salvation. Those chapters up till the end of 11 basically deal with how, through Christ, we are forgiven, how we are saved, how we are justified, how we are set free from our sin. Now in the 12th chapter, Paul begins a new section. He begins with the word, therefore. And that word, therefore, is very important. Therefore, after all that Paul has said about our sin and our salvation, about how we are delivered from our sin, therefore, he has given the doctrinal teaching. Now he turns to the practical application. Since Christ has saved you, since Christ died and rose again for you, this is therefore how you are to respond. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy. He's really, in those words, giving to us the motive for our Christian service and our Christian lives. Why do we serve? Why think about our spiritual gifts? Why use them? Why be a part of the church? Why give? Why serve? Why do so much? And it comes down to this. Therefore, in view of God's mercies, allow that to sink into your mind and into your heart. Therefore, in view of God's mercy. Think about all that he has done for you. Think about how Jesus came into this world, how he lived and taught and worked miracles, but then he went to the cross. And the Bible tells us that it was for us that he died. Therefore, in view of God's mercy, this ought to be your motive. This is why we serve. This is why we use our gifts. Because of His mercies. Some time ago, I 
heard that basically there are two religions. There's the religion that says that man can make his own way to God. And much of the world believes that. If only we do enough good works. If only we do enough rituals. If only we do this or that. If we put all our effort into it, say our prayers, do our works, somehow we'll reach up to God with the hope that our good will outbalance our bad. That's one religion. On the other hand, there is Christianity which says that we can't reach up to God on our own efforts. It says rather that God has come down to us. That God did what we couldn't do. Jesus took our place, died in our place. And therefore we can be forgiven and we can be connected to God. We need to ask the question, what's our motive? Why use our gifts? Why serve? Paul says, therefore, in view of God's mercy. Do it because of what God has first done for you. The secondly, we also need to check our dedication for service. Paul says, I urge you, or he uses strong language here, I plead with you, I urge you, I beg you, Therefore, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Since Christ has died for you, this is what you are to do. Make an offering. Not an offering of money. Of course, you can give that too. But first of all, an offering of yourself. Paul is going back to the Old Testament system of sacrifices. Worship in the Old Testament centered around the sacrifices that were made. It goes all the way back to Genesis, the first sacrifices made by Cain and Abel, where Cain brought some of the fruit of the ground and Abel brought some of the, some of the flock. And... They brought their sacrifices. In the Old Testament, an animal had to die. Paul says, make a sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, but rather a living one, and do this as the expression of your worship. Worship is more than singing songs or hymns. It's more than simply reading a passage and speaking about it. It's more than coming together on a Sunday. Worship involves our lives. It's the giving of our lives. Paul says this is to be our spiritual act of worship. He says, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, as a spiritual act of worship worship. What good would our words do if we didn't also give our hearts? What would it mean if we only said words in songs without really the commitment of our hearts and lives? It's not how much the Holy Spirit we have, but rather how much does the Holy Spirit have us? Are we yielded to him? Are we giving of ourselves to him? Are we saying to him, take me, use me, have me, empower me? This is your spiritual act of worship. And he elaborates on what kind of sacrifices those are to be. He says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In teenage years, there is great pressure to conform. No one wants to be called a geek or a nerd or a fool. There's the pressure to 
conform, to be like the rest. No one wants to be an outsider. They want to be included. But Paul says in this verse, be different. In another passage, he says, be a fool. Be a fool for Christ's sake. Be different. Don't be conformed to this world. Now, what does that mean? not to be conformed to this world. There are some groups who take that very literally, such as the Amish, who say that they shouldn't have electricity or shouldn't have automobiles. They should have horse and buggies, and they shouldn't wear certain types of clothes. They should be very plain in their clothing and uh, no lipstick or a jewelry or other things. Is that what Paul means here when he says, don't be conformed? To this world. Well, the kingdom of God is not about automobiles or about horse and buggies or electricity or lipstick. Paul is speaking about the spirit of this age, he's speaking about the lifestyle, about the values. He's speaking about not conforming to the behavior, the customs of this age. It's not, he does not want us to go along with sinful values, with sinful lifestyles. We are in this world and we are a part of this world, but yet we are not to adopt the desires and the patterns of this world. He says, rather, be renewed, be transformed in your thinking. The word he uses there is a radical change. It's the word metamorphosis, which is the process that a caterpillar goes through in order to become a butterfly. He says, be transformed in your way of thinking. In your approach to life, be a new and different person. Using our gifts, we need to check our motives. We need to also check our dedication. Are we yielded? Are we saying, Lord, use me, no matter what my gift may be? And then thirdly, we also need to check our attitudes. And Paul speaks of that in verse 3. He says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. Some of the people of Paul's day had an ego problem. They had showy and special spiritual gifts, and they liked to flaunt those gifts. Paul said, don't think too highly of yourself. Think with sober judgment. Realize that you too are a sinner by nature and by choice, and you too come only by the grace of God. You are a sinner saved by grace. It's all about grace. God's riches at Christ's expense God's riches are forgiveness in heaven, but they came at Christ's expense. Think of yourself with sober judgment, not comparing yourself to someone else. But rather, he says, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. That ought to be our measuring stick in accordance with the measure of faith God gives. How do we discover our gifts? Well, we can do a lot of things. We can pray about that. We ought to pray, Lord, what are my gifts? How do you want to use me? What opportunities are there? And then we can also read the Word. We can read passages such as Romans 12 or 1 Corinthians 12 that we looked at last week, Ephesians 4, 1 Peter 4, that speak about spiritual gifts. 
We can take a survey. We can listen to others. Sometimes others see gifts in us that we might not see in ourselves. And sometimes we just have to try. Try things out. If we're asked to teach or we're asked to lead or serve in some way, maybe there's something that we can try. And in trying that, we discover our gifts. But before we do all of that, we need to check our motives. Why do we serve at all? Are we serving out of gratitude because of what God has first done for us? We need to check our dedication. Are we yielded to him? And then we need to check our attitude. Are we serving with a servant's attitude? An attitude more like Jesus himself. Let's seek to do that. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you gave us the example of service. For you came not to be served, but to serve. And even to give your life as a ransom for many. Help us to serve out of gratitude, to yield ourselves, and to have an attitude that puts you first, an attitude that desires your glory, an attitude that will encourage others. Bless us as we think on these things. In Jesus' name. God has given each and every one of us um, special gifts, and I pray that you all will search your hearts and find out which ones are yours. Um, Pastor Bruce did have something during the Sunday School Hour, uh, a little paper that you could fill out, and I'm sure he has more of those if any of you missed it, and it does kind of help clarify some of the things that maybe you're better at than others. So as you think about that, just try to remember that we do need to use all our gifts to glorify God. Will you stand and sing?
of God that passes all understanding.